Hi YouTube, and once again, happy PDA Cats Tuesday. In this video, I'm going to begin my project to build a TI-66, TI-95, and potentially also an ERTA interface over Wi-Fi using this Node MCU ESP8266 board that I've mounted in my split breadboard. As many people suggested, I probably just should have put two breadboards down. I'll probably do that in the future. Anyway, so I'll set that back here and I'll pull out the TI-66. I'm going to probe its two-line serial output with this multimeter and a little M5 stack ESP32 proto oscilloscope in just a little bit. Anyway, so this is the TI-66. It runs on two button cell batteries. It's one of the Galaxy line of TI calculators that competed with the Voyager series that HP made. This one's actually quite slow, and it's actually built by Toshiba, so these tend to be really reliable. It's a Toshiba OEM uh, made for TI. One thing on mine is the two little rubber nubs here. The back feet were coming off, so I put some contact cement and secured those so they wouldn't come out. So those are not falling off in the case now, which is great. Anyway, there's the front. Nice, nice keyboard. Excellent color scheme there. And over here is the two-line serial output that I'll probe. Unlike the Voyager series calculators with at least the TI-66, you could print to a TI PC200 printer, which I have, and I'll demonstrate in a future video when I review the TI-66. Anyway, so what I want to build eventually is a Wi-Fi interface for this using an ESP8266, as well as one for the uh, TI-95 that I'll also be reviewing in the future. Anyway, yeah, so I got this for, I think, 20 bucks in this nice leather case. And what I'll do now is go ahead and put this JST connector um, right there that I filed down to fit in the slot. Okay, so now that is inserted and connected. And I'll do a test, you know, imagined print and then see both the amplitude of the AC signal and the frequency. I've tried before to get the frequency with this Multimeter, that didn't work too well since I think it's um, a really slow pulse. But anyway, let's let's just look at the voltage. Um, AC voltage. Okay, so there's black to black, negative, and then positive. Okay, and let's turn it on. And we're reading, what is it, about 0.3 right now. I'll go... To the top of the stack, press second, and then list the program and see what we hit here. I went from 0.3 to 0.5, roughly. So I guess 0.2 volts is, is our, our peak on either side. It's still printing. I'll let that sit for a little more, for a little longer. Okay, and we'll wait until we see a zero on that display. Yeah, maybe even 0.5. Oh, and we're back. Yeah, so 0.3 to 0.5. So it looked like a peak of 0.2 volts. Now let's hook this up to the M5 stack and see there what voltage and, and, and how quickly we get peaks. Okay. So for this, I only need one channel, but I might as well get both since I don't know for sure which line is ground and which is the signal. Let me move that up a bit in view and get this thing, which has the multi-ROM right now, including the oscilloscope. I have you know a lot of uses planned for this and oscilloscope right now, but I want to adjust that oscilloscope so I can save the traces, save the output, and then look at it later. That'll be really important because the decoding plan right now is write a program with each keystroke, each programmable sequence and then see how that um, decodes and whatever trace of uh, pulses. 
But anyway, so oscilloscope now may be um, changing that oscilloscope a bit. And um, I also have a heart rate monitor for this. So I could use this as a coherence meter or, you know, an open source Fitbit. Okay. So let's get two lines in there under 35 and 36. Okay. Yep. 35 and 36. Yeah, you can see that well. Okay, and then put red to one channel, oops, and black to the other. And I will move that up and then tilt downward to get the best view possible. Tilt down and zoom in. Okay, that should be good. This will turn it on. Should turn it on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, off. Uh huh. Okay. Oscilloscope. Um, let's see. So it's probably a little hard to see that. Let me zoom. Well, I'll, I'll wait a second. I'm going to set this. I'll see it in a second to, um, yeah, one volt. For both channels, I'm going to go all the way up to um, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, one second for the uh, time frame we're looking at. Everything else, good. Okay. Yeah, so that looks pretty, pretty blah, which is good. Um, I've pressed RST. Now let's press second and list and watch what we get. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're already getting something. Uh, let me see a few peaks. And, I, and I'll do this again a second time so we can really see that output well. If only I could run OBS on this teeny little ARM-based device. But definitely a big improvement here It will be... Um, Figuring out what those pulses are. So we, yeah, we finished listing the program. Let me um, zoom out a little bit and just show you what the program is. Okay. Um, let's go learn mode. Oops, no, not that. RST, learn. Label A, store zero, recall zero, times DSC on zero. Um, or, and go back to zero four return. Yeah, I forget what this program was for. Um, hmm. Something like probably a factorial. I bet that's what it is. Yeah, but anyway, so those are the codes at, at each byte. I'll go back there. And now I'll play that again for you. Okay. ST. Let's zoom in and watch that trace. And notice what the peaks are. I think it's the second channel that's picking up signal. So I think the bottom wire is ground and the top one is zero output. So that's important to note. But again, I'll, I'll, I'll check that again. Okay, so let's see here. Video. That was good. Oh, wow, I can do more? Yeah, I can do five seconds even. I'll do two seconds. Or even one. Okay. Oh, let's try two. No, one. Okay. So I'm going to go second here. Oh well, much better. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, I think that should be a lot clearer. Okay, second list.
There's one peak, another peak, another peak, another peak, another. Looks like they come about every every point one seconds, roughly. Still printing. And that's an interesting cycle. So that one was more like um, 0.25. And now we're done. Okay. Uh, let's try it one more time with five second steps. Okay. RST second. So slow pulses, I think a peak of, yeah, about 0.25 or 0.3 from baseline. And I, I'll see what you all think in the comments, but I'd sample this maybe with an ADC channel on the um, ESP8266. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, that looked a bit... Um, Different. Anyway, so thanks for watching. I'll sample a bit more and maybe record some more videos, but that concludes my first TI-66 decoding video. Please like and subscribe and leave any questions or thoughts you have down below. I appreciate your attention. Have a great rest of your week.